Hey YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've got the Sea Wind 1.4 meter. This creation is something special from Tower Hobbies from yesteryear, and they've re released it with amazing features like retracts on a hold bottom ship plane. It's so cool. Look at this. And of course, steerable nose gear. There is actually a water rudder, which you'll see actually deploys automatically on yours. <laughs> I broke mine. You'll see that in one of our flights. And then of course, you've got some amazing flaps. So we're gonna go ahead and fly this on 2200 3S right now. It's gonna be amazing. So guys, stay tuned. We got a little bit of light wind confused, going mostly that direction. And notice there's a few markers out and that's because we're gonna be digging here pretty quick. Here goes nothing. Take off flaps. <laughs> I did a bad job of that. Get out of the flaps. Okay, out a couple of steps right now. Good job. Not so far. Go back. Right there. So guys, we had a rainy night the other night and we were filming and it was pretty cool to be able to do it but it was not very good footage because of the lighting is too dark and yes there is a rooster in the background mm -hmm. that keeps calling out must be looking for a friend very confused about the time of day it's definitely not morning it's the opposite of that so we have the asterix and safe installed ar 631 is what we used okay i'm going to give you guys a shot of the landing gear that guy's just going crazy. Here comes the gear. That is so sweet, I gotta say. So if you guys are into new and exciting things and you don't mind a twist on the past from Tower Hobbies, look no further than the Sea Wind. Rudder Authority. Everything is actually really good on this plane. It's just a different experience in general. It definitely flies different than we've had and different than we're used to. But you know what? It flies good. It's just, it's just something different. And I know that you guys like different things as you fly. Because I gotta say, it's not another P-51. It's not another Timber, that's for sure. It's a Sea Wind. Now that being said, I don't mean to take anything away from P-51s or Timbers because I love those planes. But what I will do is I will tell you this, this plane flies like it's got an engine mounted on top of it <laughs> and it flies a little bit softer on the sticks than you might be used to. We're gonna see if we can do a touch and go. Oh, that is so sweet. Confused winds. Whee! <laughs> You're going up. I gotta say, guys, I don't know if you could tell from the way I pulled out of that, but it's like this plane, it just has a little bit different flight characteristics. It's once you put the wheels down, it does great. There's actually no problem landing. It kind of goes straight. It just does what you expect it to do exactly. And I mean, exactly. The thing about it is the roll is very different than what you're expecting full landing flaps now. We're seeing the nose down just a little bit. Whoa, whoa. you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. There is a distinct point in the middle of your landing approach that you're not going to expect if there's a gust of wind. Now that's why you need the AS3X, uh, AS3X and safe because it's just gonna make your flight experience all that much better. And I guarantee you're not gonna be doing this <laughs> the same way you are if you get an AR620 like Tower wants you to get. I just don't think you're gonna enjoy the flight experience near as much. The envelope is gonna be a lot narrower. You're gonna have to fly a lot more careful. You're gonna have to be careful about getting nasty, nasty stalls. The only thing I'm worried about is getting lift when I'm not expecting it. We're gonna get into the wind here, full landing flaps now. There is not a huge impact from the flaps, I can tell you that from 
So you guys see that little sink there? Mm -hmm. There it is. And as you can see, it actually does pretty good in grass. Also, because I've already broke mine, we can show you this. Now, I'm gonna just admit right now, you'll see in our video later, if you wanna put your water rudder out of service, it will go opposite gear position, okay? So if the gear are up, the water rudder comes down. And so what I'm gonna show you, we have nice, reasonably tall, soft grass because it's late in the season and it's fall in Iowa, okay? When you pull these retracts like that, you can see the linkage extend. Do you guys see the linkage? And so basically, see it there? So all I would need to do is reattach that, but for now I have it disabled because I wanna show you how cool it is to take off. And also, just so you know, this thing is strong. I can hold it by the motor mount, okay? It's just a different creation. You wouldn't expect to be able to do all that stuff with a plane of this shape and magnitude. It's a 1.4 meter plane. So also, we're 14 seconds over our five. I'm gonna just clear that timer to show you pretty good flight times too. On a 2200 3S, that's crazy, okay. Speaking of unheard, throttle cuts on, take off flaps, here we go. Watch how fast I get it up on plane. Good rudder authority. There it is, guys. Oh, man. That is so sweet. And to be honest, I wasn't really, I didn't feel like I was pushing it. I kind of was. Okay, out of the flaps. That was just takeoff flaps. Getting a lot better footage tonight, I feel like. Don't you? Yeah, well, you were a little silhouette over there, but it's good. Going on the inside. Mm -hmm. Now, you may notice that it's moving around a lot. You got to admit, it's very confused winds right now. Don't hold it against the plane. I don't want the sea wind to get docked because we actually have some confused winds. And the truth is, what's happening is right below my feet right now, where the airplane is, that's gonna be a pond. That's why you see markings over our septic tank there. If you guys are from the city and you don't know what a septic tank is, that's where poop goes. <laughs> that's right, poop and urine. Oh. And gray water. That's where everything that leaves your house goes. That's right. Oh, also dish water. Yes. That'd be gray water. Gray and black water is actually what it's called, but that's okay. So if you guys make a high-speed landing, that's <laughs> what it looks like. So we like to really squeeze the most out of these videos. And so that shortly unscheduled <laughs> landing, we're going to go ahead and take it for what it's worth because to be honest with you, it doesn't seem to have phased the plane. And I was... Uh, probably just a little bit too close to the grass. But you know what? Ground effect evidently uh, doesn't affect this plane as much as I expected. In fact, I'm curious if I can ground handle it here because that grass is tall. Look how high it the prop is, is. Okay, throttle cuts off. Oh, goodness gracious, That's that really is better, awesome. Actually. Okay, so yaw authority is a little bit lacking because it keeps hitting those canoes. Let's go up here and take off again. Oh, that is so fun, guys. The hay grass is way better, actually. I mean, I gotta say, folks, that was really fun. And also, what have you seen on the front of these wings that I usually scream loudly for? LEDs. Yeah, but it's not just LEDs. It's yeah. nav lights, it's landing lights, it's flashing strobes. Mm -hmm. So yes, this plane really has a lot to offer. Ooh, that was an accidental landing. Should we do a purposeful landing? In the grass? Yeah. Yeah, okay. sure. Why don't you go out there by the bull? Okay. I'm gonna show you guys a different line. Right there, it's probably about right. Okay. I'm gonna take this line here. Right, right there, right there, right there. I know, there. can't see you. I know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be framed. Full landing flaps here. Don't put your gear down, Brian. Oh, did you guys see that? That was crazy. Look how nice that is. <laughs> Touch and went. <laughs> that is so much fun, guys. I mean, I'm not used to float planes doing so dang good on grass. Oh man, that's like actually really good. I totally am glad I accidentally scraped it in there. I'll show you some upside down performance. Okay, here it is. It's like wonkily weird. Actually, it's very symmetrical. I'm barely 5% stick up. That is so cool. 
you got to show them that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another pass. Cam crew, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get it flipped over. Okay, so we're over. Look at the little teeny bit of stick I'm given to hold it up there. Let's see if we can. Now, it's not going to flip over upside down, folks. It just doesn't have the balls to do it, okay? This thing is not a powerhouse, but it's not bad for a 3S. I thought it was going to be like barely getting around, but I'm going to tell you this right now. It's doing just fine. It's doing just fine. And I think the one thing that might be happening, that little bit of wonkiness that we notice on the occasional gust is that the trajectory of the thrust is probably changing very slightly by the wind pushing the nose of the motor around. I think that's the only way to explain that very subtle trajectory offset. It's not bad, and AS3X is going to help hide that, but it's definitely not nothing, okay? Woo, I just about dragged my tip. And also I have to remember, oh, what is that? That was so cool. Did you see that up there? It's what? one of our big brothers and sisters oh, up there. there. And it was like right hitting the sun. Yeah, they can see, see it? it right there, yeah. That's so cool. Well, so now, I'm sorry, it go ahead. Say, it is gusty, like it's not really that windy. It's a yeah, little it's just, bit, but it's it is just gusty. weirdly gusty. And by the way, I gotta say, Tower, good job. Eat your heart out. You did such a nice job on this plane. And it's really easy build. Yes. Uh, compared to another one that shall name un shall remain unnamed for a little bit longer. That one was a little harder. And uh, you guys will see it here on Brian Phillips RC, just like you see this. I'm not hearing beeping at all still. No. That is just an incredible flight performance. All right, let's try for another pass, more of a conventional pass. Okay. Now, I got to say, it flies different than what we're used to, folks. So don't expect it to be a timber, okay? This is not a timber. Don't expect it to be a P-51. I don't know why I pulled those out of the bag, but that's true. It's just a different flying experience. It's got a, it's got a really short boom compared to what you're used to, and the thrust is coming from the middle, which is highly unusual. Okay, I think I might. Do you want gear down? Yeah, can we try and do one Okay. more? Yeah, we'll try. Okay. I'm just, it's just feeling kind of weak, so I'm trying to be a little bit careful. I'm behind you. Okay, very good, very good. You're fine. It's just a different landing, and you see that, guys? Right up on the mains, no problem. And being able to slow it down is no problem. I thought we were gonna have problems with the yanking once you get on the ground, just because that nose gear is all operated with the mains on one 17 gram servo, including the tail rudder. So that whole apparatus goes on one movement like this and the entire thing moves. It's so cool. And then there's two linkages that operate the flaps. So this wing has an opposite design of this wing. And I just think to myself, you could just use two servos. <laughs> Seems but so I, complicated. You have to remember, so much has changed in the last 10-ish years of RC. And I'm telling you, the cost of components have come down so much, but the cost of labor has gone up. And so it's just a very strange circumstance. And so for Tower to put out such a complex, cool plane right now, I think speaks volumes to the fact that they're in it to win it, which is really cool. And so we love to do Tower products when we get them. We've only done a handful of them, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But I am super happy with this product. It's really fun. It's very different. Oh, and by the way, probably two minutes. I've been blathering for a while. So that could easily be set to like 12. Well, we were right at 12 when we landed. And we were on the ground for a minute when we looked over there. So I haven't heard a beep yet. I know. But I think what I happens is you get up against some gustiness. And it's not like you have control here, okay? Because you have wash over the rudder and over the elevator. And so you have good Johnny on the spot control, but that doesn't give you airspeed. And so the roll authority has to depend on airspeed. So it's, a, it's very unusual, okay? It's, um, well, I guess that would be true on a regular outboard aileron, but it's just, it's just a different feel, okay? So when you get it, you'll know. And it's fun because I love different flying planes like this. Now, there have been other planes and I'm not crazy about that they fly different. Particularly, I'm not like a huge fan of flying Delta planes, 
Um, I, I do, and I enjoy the, the difference there as a nuance, but I like the way this one flies and it lands really easy and it actually takes off super easy. I'm a little bit bummed the way I bounced. I hit one of my little ruts out here mm -hmm. when we were landing and I think it slammed down onto the rudder and you guys will see that, but no big deal. All I need to do is undo the screw and I think I broke about like four threads off. So I should be able to slide the whole shaft back and just reattach it. But for now, I'm just taking advantage of the fact that it's stowed all the time, yeah. okay? Now you guys probably don't have to worry about that because you can learn from my screw up. And that's one of the biggest values you get on Brian Phillips RC is you get to watch me fly these planes and you get to say, you know, I kind of know like where he ranks in the uh, realm of like skill level. Um, you know, I've seen enough of his property and the way he flies and where he flies to understand how tight it is. And I can apply that then to whether or not I think this thing's gonna work for my park or for my field or for my flying, you know, club or whatever it is, okay? So I can definitely tell you 1400 millimeters, when we pulled it out of the box, I'm like, there ain't no way this thing's gonna be 1400 millimeters because it's like, it's small. It's like to the point. So for that reason, I feel like the wing loading is like strangely low. It's got a huge wing. And then even like when you're banking, you have like a wing that sticks out here. It's not a winglet, it's like a reverse winglet. So I just can't get enough of this plane. It's really, really fun. And what makes me think I would like to have a plane that's like this, but even bigger. And I'd love to have a plane like this even smaller. And I think that's the way a lot of these hobby companies do it. But I gotta say, some of the technology that we have now that's improved on areas that this one maybe has some weaknesses on still, which to be honest with you, have not fleshed themselves out to be much. It'd be cool to see because I mean, look at the lights. We have lights, mm -hmm. we have flaps, inboard flaps, we have a cool canopy, look at this. And guys, we will share that other flight, so stay tuned for that after this is over. Look at this. It's even got little latches, so you pull that forward and it holds the canopy. If you could take your chairs out, there's a total of four of these chairs, there's two like this, two doubles, and you can see where our battery is. Good luck adjusting your CG, by the way. <laughs> and then you even have the yokes, it's so cool. And look at that, we have one passenger, 3.64. So yeah, 12 minutes is about perfect. That's gonna get you down just a little bit past storage, storage voltage. And then when you're ready to lower this, you can either pull them forward or just kind of slam it. And in my case, I haven't figured out like the trick. I think you kind of push them up and it drops down. But what I wanna show you real quick, throttle cut is on and tested because my hand is right in the prop. So just be careful. Is that not so cool? Mm -hmm. That is amazing. I love it. And look, they even lock out and there's a spring. So they are spring loaded. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now also, I got to say, we drove around in the grass a lot. And if anything, we kind of cleaned off the wash from when we were doing it in the rain. So that's pretty sweet. Now look at this steerable. It's actually quite robust. I thought the thing was going to be hard to handle on the ground. I have no idea how this is going to do in actual water ops because I feel like you're going to tend to pick up water in the nose. Camera crew is gonna hold that for a minute. But you look at how huge this wing is. It's gigantic. Hold on, we have grass. I have to get the grass out. It was under a decal. But how sweet is this plane? It's just something we haven't seen before. And so I gotta say, if you guys are even remotely in the market for seaplanes, this thing is definitely should be on your list because it's a totally different and cool experience. Now, if you got it in yesteryear, you might want to think about getting it because I guarantee you what we're dealing with here is probably a far cry from what you got years ago, okay? Because this thing has been improved in certain ways, I have to imagine, because everything went together super smooth. Yes. Now also, what we're gonna do, as soon as we shut off the camera, is we're gonna do a quick walk and talk about our pond. So if you guys wanna see and learn more about that, you can stay tuned for another video on Brian Phillips RC. We're getting ready to get down and dirty with it. It's gonna make a mess of our yard like really bad, I'm afraid, so you guys are gonna be seeing it anyway. But we want you to understand what's going on and so we're gonna help share that next. But in the meantime, if you wanna help support us, buy the Sea Wind from Tower Hobbies. We'll have links down below in our video description. All you have to do is click the link and when you follow and buy one, or follow and find out it's too much, or follow and find out it's not enough, or you, you don't like it because the specs are listed there, that's fine. 
The beauty of working with Brian Phillips RC is that we're gonna help you to make a good decision. Like, I don't particularly care if you want this particular plane. Of course, Tower does. But we serve you, and we help to sell planes for these guys because we want all these companies to succeed. Now, we want them to succeed when they're doing good things for the hobby too, okay? So when we get amazing, cool products, we're really excited about it. And when we get mediocre products, we're still pretty excited about it. When they're terrible products, we're upset about it. And so we try our best to work with companies that put out good product on a reliable basis, meaning that most of them are gonna be, on, by and large, they're good, or we kind of deal with it, like bam! <clears throat> and that's how you know when you're watching a Brian Phillips RC video that we're really into it because we're doing good planes. So that being said, everybody has their cup of tea and if this isn't your cup of tea and you wanna still support us, then smash the like button anyway. Don't vote based on the plane, vote based on how we executed our video performance or the audio or the beautiful lighting or the scenery or whatever it happens to be that makes you happy. But then also I wanna ask you another favor and that is if you wanna support us financially and not in this way because we're getting ready to make a big boatload of expenses here, you can support us by doing Patreon, one-time gifts. Remember, we're friend and family, excuse me, PayPal, <laughs> one-time gifts uh, for friends and family. Otherwise, everybody pays fees. It's stupid. And then we have PayPal, Patreon. Goodness gracious. Patreon is a monthly support. It'll also give you access to me for comments because I see them quicker. <laughs> and then we have YouTube super thanks, one-time gifts, and then YouTube membership. We go over those four because that's the four things that people that can't, don't, or won't buy from our links have to support us. Those are venues that people have asked us to bring out. If you hear me saying that and you're hearing it in the wrong light, believe me, I didn't ever want to bring it up, but the camera crew over the course of many years suggested like, you need to probably start asking because there's people that keep asking you repeatedly in the comments. Yeah. So we did, I said, I don't want to start a Patreon begging site. And the truth is I don't want to because I don't, my pride is too big. I don't, I'm, I'm too proud to realize that we actually need help doing some of this huge stuff that we're doing. Uh, but my appeal to you is that we kind of do. And the truth is you guys have been um, huge representatives in our lives for support. And so we really appreciate you doing that. And we don't want to stop you and cut you off at the knees if you do want to support us. And if you look back here at all these flags, <laughs> these flags, it looks like there, there was like a bombing raid or something here. Really so. Those flags are just marking underground utilities, okay? So, and that's the private markings and they're going to mark the public stuff up here because we had to call before dig. So the truth is when we do these big, huge projects, like when we built the house, we shared that with you guys. Now, most of that came from us working our tails off for many, 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 many decades. But we're getting to the point where now YouTube is starting to pay some dividends. And those dividends are getting all reinvested. So if you know anything about stocks, that's what we're doing with this pond. And the truth is we have other projects after that's done. And then we have other projects after that's done and more projects after that's done, few of them have a little bit of a leaning toward family needs. Some of them have a little bit of leaning toward uh, other reasons. But I'm gonna tell you this, they're all gonna be in support of this channel and it's gonna be amazing. We can't wait to bring it to you, but it is dependent on whether or not we see support. So at the end of the day, I'm a proud guy, just like anybody who's worked for what they've got and we keep working and we love doing this, but we do it because you guys are there. If you aren't there, we'll quit in like two seconds. Because as much as I love having a thousand planes in my house and I will fly the wings off of them whenever we're done with this, we need to have the support to help make this make sense in our family, okay? And that's true for anybody who does a big channel. You probably don't realize it. It just looks all fun and games from the couch. But here when it's 14 below and there's 18 inches of snow on the ground and we're still filming, you'll have a better understanding of what I mean. And by the way, all you have to do is go back and look at some of our 1800 plus videos to help point out those details. So we are gonna to try to share as much about the pond as we can. We're gonna be in Alabama. We're excited to do that. Thank goodness we're getting over some cold. So we're gonna be hopefully healthy for that. And we hope to see you guys there. It's gonna be a blast. But anyway, guys, thanks for enduring our request for funding and support, okay? We know that many of you can't, won't, or don't, and that's fine. We still love having you here. Smash the like button, watch the videos, you know, every once in a while, when you think you might buy something, follow the link, and that's the way you can show us that you're serious supporters. And for those of you that do support us, thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate you, and we want you here with us. So thanks for being a part of our success. And there's more to come, so stay tuned. This thing was cool. Sea Wind from Tower Hobbies. 
What a sweet and different thing that we haven't seen before. I think you guys want one in your hangar. Stay tuned, so much more from Brian Phillips RC coming. Oh, we'll show you the other flights too, right away. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've got something totally new for you. 1.4 meter sea wind from Tower Hobbies. Check this out. Is that not the sweetest float plane? Did you notice the rudder that popped out? Is that not so cool or what? So obviously, since we don't have our pond dug, we're gonna be flying it in the rain to simulate the pond today. Also check this out, look at the flaps. Inboard flaps, absolutely delicious. Can't wait to see this thing fly. Very cool, very cool. Can't wait to get it in the air. So we're gonna do it right now. Throttle cuts off, here we go. 2200 3S, which is crazy. She's in the air. Okay, gear going up. Now, look at those lights. We do have a stabilizer in here. AS3X and safe. Oh man, those strobes look cool. The wind is definitely confused right now, but it's not as heavy as it's gonna be later. And she's getting kicked around something fierce right now. Look at that. Oh, gorgeous. So really definitely a little bit on the touchy side on the stabilizer, but it's flying very easy. We hope you guys can see good. And it's very quiet, surprisingly quiet. Okay, I'm gonna do a takeoff flap. Now this is full landing flaps. Definitely flies different than anything we've ever had. So that's full throttle. It actually has a pretty good amount of power. I'm gonna to try to do a loop here or maybe a bit of a roll. Yeah, so it's got plenty of balls to do what it needs to do. But at the end of the day, it is definitely not gonna be some sort of an aerodynamic, excuse me, an acrobatic or aerobatic rather. Novelty. Boy, that looks so good up against the trees. Going up and over. So if we were going to fly in the uh, creek or the pond, I mean, that's where we'd be we'd going right now. Let's try to get a couple inside passes if you want to take a few more steps out here, please. Thank you, good job. We're kind of flying into the wind, that's why I was saying. Beautiful lights, those lights really help with visibility. Gotta say, a little bit of trim on the left right from the rudder. And boy, I tell you what, you know, when you get the clouds like this, they can definitely make the plane challenging to see out of the flaps altogether. And the weird thing is, because of the nature of the shape of this plane, it's just like very different looking in the air. Meaning that you're used to seeing kind of the tail boom assembly. And it's like, it's almost like a wing is flying up there. It's very weird. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell from just looking at it, but I think it looks like that. Now, the other thing is I'd really, since it's wet, I'm wondering if we can try for a touch and go. What do you think? I'm gonna have to really get it lined up nicely because I don't wanna crash the plane. But guys, we have a five minute timer where one minute and 39 is left. It does cruise pretty quick, to be honest. I feel like it's gonna slow down okay though. Okay, so slowing it down, just kind of pointing it downhill, getting it to relax. Let's see how it does. Let's just land it. Whoa, must've hit a bump there. That wasn't bad at all. Okay, throttle cuts on. Now, obviously the gear were up and this is the type of plane you can get away with that on because it's got floats. And admittedly, guys, if you look at my grass here, we've got these big chunks missing. I probably just bounced out of one of those. Uh, so I don't think that was the plane, but you also notice there's pontoons built into the wings, which is so sweet. Now you stay on the concrete there, camera crew. I really, really like the way that this plane looks. I had no idea what to expect. How's the rudder? Does it look good? Oh, it popped up, didn't it? Let's go ahead and open the gear. Yeah, I, I wonder if it popped back. Oh, you know what it did? It broke off the end of the rod. So I'll have to actually spend a little bit of effort and fix that. But yeah, that pulls down normally and then it actually is supposed to. Yeah, so it definitely didn't like that, guys. That's a bummer. 
But you know, truth is, I'd kind of like to see if I can take off uh, from the ground. So let's try that. Also, show them where my stabilizer set, just a little bit over halfway, which is more than we would normally do. The other thing is, I don't think most of you are gonna hand launch a plane like this, but you could, I feel like you could pretty easily do it. Um, we haven't heard any voltage alarm issues. We haven't even heard it chirp once, so I think we're okay. I'm gonna run down here. You can stay right in the middle. Okay. We're just gonna see if this thing will belly land. Take off? Yeah, I'm gonna see if it'll take off. Cause this, it's so wet, we can actually get away with it on this flight. All right, so the wind is sort of, the wind is sort of right there, okay? So this will be kind of a weird exercise in futility potentially, but we're gonna do our best here to give you guys kind of a cool look at this plane, all right? So takeoff flaps deployed. There it is, folks. She's in the air. That was actually not bad at all. It was 75, 80% throttle. Got it up on a plane in the grass. Just kidding, guys. So yeah, the thing is way faster than I thought. Okay, so let's try a landing with gear. Camera crew, are you good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Visibility. I mean, you can definitely tell where the plane is, no doubt. Okay, I'm gonna have to, woo, a little bounce, bounce and go. I'm gonna have to redo this a little better. I'm out of the flaps, out of the gear. I'm gonna try the other way. There's just a lot of confused wind here. Okay, full landing flaps. I don't think I'm gonna have enough here. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to go around. I'm gonna actually leave it in, in landing configuration. Look how, look how wobbly it is though, guys. I gotta say, I'm just losing my visibility. And the problem is I'm trying, I'm flying in the wind here, guys. But the thing is I gotta lose altitude early. Camera crew, you good? Mm -hmm. Okay, stay back just in case. There it is. And we're down. And really easy to control once it's on the ground. I thought it was gonna be wonky as all get out, but to be honest, it's actually quite good. There's a very complicated nose gear assembly, so you'll wanna make sure you touch down on your mains to try to avoid having some issues with that getting pushed up. I'm super bummed that I stupidly lost that water rudder, guys. But the truth is, it's just the end where it's threaded got broke. And so I'm hoping I can just slide it back out a little bit and redo that or just get another rod. But one way or another, what a cool plane. Um, I don't feel like we did it justice because the lighting is so muted right now. But the cool thing is I could definitely see it to get it down. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that would help is if we had three points of lights, that's something I've you know, preached about for a long time. If you have three points of light, you can tell your pitch access better. Um, when you just have the wingtip lights, you can definitely tell where the plane is and it's spread way out there, which is cool. But the thing is, it's really hard to tell your pitch access when you get this type of lighting. So again, that's not so much of a incrimination of the airplane itself. It's more of just an incrimination of the timing and the weather that we have right now. Because here in fall in central Iowa, we of course have dark, you know, twilights when it's raining. And we don't normally film in the rain, but we're getting ready to go to Alabama next week. We're getting ready to dig a pond. We're getting ready to move some trees. We just have a lot going on right now. And so as much as I want to make this plane the number one priority, mother nature is being very uncooperative. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try our best to get you guys at least off light in better conditions. But truthfully, I don't know that it's gonna be better wind wise, but it's probably gonna be better light wise. Yeah. So anyway, very cool plane. If you guys wanna buy one and help support Brian Phillips RC, all you have to do is go into the video description below and there should be a link to the plane. The receiver we used, which is an Air 631, they're recommending a 620. I think they're crazy. Uh, get a 631, you want a stabilizer because even with the stabilizer, the thing was getting whipped around. So if you're wanting to fly this without a stabilizer, you're gonna have your hands full, truthfully. So I would highly suggest that you listen to me on this one because the 631 is gonna be a better pick if you ask my opinion. That being said, if you don't like flying with stabilizers, the thing will fly. It's just more a matter of, I want the stability. And to be honest with you, 
even with the wind and everything, I felt like it could have used more. So I might need to go to two times because right now where I am, if I were to go to two times, I could have it as though it was like almost all the way up at about the halfway point, mm -hmm. okay? And that's one of my goals when I set up an AR631 or 637 or 8260. 8360. Uh, 8360, I always say that wrong. Sorry guys. But at the end of the day, what a cool plane. Let's go look at it and see if there's any damage. Obviously the damage we know about is on the tail rudder. So I don't know if you knew you were gonna be landing on grass. I think you could probably just loosen the linkage and then go ahead and let it slide free. Because oh. you don't need the water rudder on grass, but you will want the water rudder in water, okay? Stay on the, yeah. the pavement here because it's so soft. But what a beauty. I mean, it looks sweet. It looks very realistic. And I gotta say, the t I mean, it's, it's really pretty well tame on the ground. And I was surprised how well it did just taxiing around I thought it was gonna be super tough to control. It's got a lot more right than it does left, it feels like maybe a little bit. No, maybe it's not quite as bad as I thought. I love seeing the reflection, yeah. that's so cool. That's cool. But also, I was just gonna say, there is a literal servo that drives the retracts on this plane. So it's just, it's just such a different plane than what we're used to. And I gotta say, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Look at that wing. You got a real thick wing. Where are the lights, folks? Where are the lights? They're on the other side of the thick wing. And with those canoes that are integral to almost the reverse winglet, you know, there's just enough material that you can't see them from the backside. Again, not an indictment on the plane, it's just more of just a fact of life. And one of the things we like to do here on Brian Phillips RC, by the way, I tape over my scroll wheel when I'm, when I'm flying in the rain. Because we have only had one problem on the NX lineup and that was when I got some water in one of my scroll wheels. I've also had some that I've flown and got water in the scroll wheels and been totally fine with as well. But I just do that as a precautionary measure if you do find yourself flying in the you know light rain like this. Um, but boy, what a sweet looking plane. I, I really wish we had one tail light. So I do kind of wish we had the tail light. Sorry, we had a camera issue there. Um, and then also I gotta say, um, you know, just the whole functionality of this with the canopy that opens up and stays opened like a hood on a car. I've got some seats in here. There's actually four seats that come with this, but the way I did my receiver wiring, it just didn't make sense to put that in. Um, and then the battery sits under the middle. Now we haven't even gotten a warning and we're at 3.92. Good Lord, we could have gone a long time on this. So I got to say, for a 3S2200, that's like almost unheard of. That's a so, big plane. yeah, I know it really is, but it's not like aggressively heavy or anything. So, let's just show you the gear one more time. That is such a sweet mechanism. I mean, it's like so cool to me. Um, and to be honest with you, one other thing that's just kind of like weird about this is look where all the control surfaces are. The surfaces are actually pretty close together. And so I feel like the pivot point on this plane, it's just kind of in a weird spot. So when you fly it, you'll understand exactly what I mean. Now it's not bad. It's not, like I said, I keep using this word indictment, but the truth is it's not bad. It's just very different. And so when you do fly it, and that's true of some float equipped planes too, um, but it just flies different than I expected. And honestly, I don't know what I expected. I'm just really glad I got a chance to fly it. Yeah. And I gotta say, I'd like to be able to see a little better while I fly it. So we're definitely gonna do our best to try to get some footage for you. And worst case scenario, there'll be a second thoughts when the pond is done and we've got some water in there because there's gonna be something cool to be able to break in the pond with. Uh, but just another quick shot of those landing gear. That is just so sweet. I actually kind of wish we had a lot more, uh, you know, instead of serverless retracts, if we had just like a giant servo that drove, I mean, you could actually use a retract mechanism to still run some of this stuff because they're so beefy and they have so much torque. Um, but again, on this prop, plenty of power. It's just almost unheard of because it's flying on a 3S2200. 30C pack, no less, folks. So very cool. The Sea Wind from Tower Hobbies, guys. Check it out at brianphillipsrc.com. If you can't find what you're looking for here, we definitely have tons of other 
planes to choose from. If this isn't your thing, which to be honest with you, I know it's probably gonna be one of those niche things because it is really cool, but it is a little bit different, okay? But we love this thing. And the other plane we got from Tower not too long ago, the ASW28 was amazing. Mm -hmm. And we have maybe another something or another up our sleeves. So you'll have to wait and see for that one. Uh, but definitely cool, guys. Check it out. Freshly redone from Tower Hobbies. The Sea Wind. What a cool, cool piece of aviation here, okay? All right, guys, leave your questions and comments down below. We'll do our best to get to them. If you wanna support us in ways that are not buying this plane, even though that's the best way, the plane, the battery, the receiver, the transmitter, that sort of thing, chargers, things that we link to, that's the best way you can support us. But if you don't wanna support us in that way, or maybe it doesn't make sense for you to do it because you're overseas, uh, by the way, we have an EU link um, so you should be able to follow the EU link for some of these items, okay, uh, for Horizon. So that being said, if you want to help support us in other ways, we have Patreon, PayPal, PayPal, we're friends and family, remember, and then YouTube, super thanks, and YouTube members. So there's four other ways you can support us if you don't want to get this totally cool plane or if your wife has threatened to leave you if you get one more. So um, guys, really cool. Can't wait to fly it again in better lighting. And we hope you guys will be here with us to enjoy it. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see the full unbox build and radio setup, which actually was extremely smooth, mm -hmm. check it out. It should be published right now. You can take off and it will be in the playlist for this plane like we do with everything else. So thanks for watching, guys. Come back for more.